Operations team here at MIT Sloan. I am joined by some of my colleagues, Rachel, Melissa, Trish, and Rayvon, who are all in the background and going to be answering our questions today. I know that some people are still logging in, so I'll give it a minute to kind of get everyone uh, um, logged in. And I see some people are already utilizing the Q&A feature, so I appreciate that. Please um, ask your questions within Q&A so that we can get to them later on in the presentation. I have some slides that I'll be sharing at the beginning of the presentation to talk a little bit about the MBAN, our business analytics program here at MIT Sloan, and then we'll discuss the admissions process and the and give some application tips towards the end as we are about one month out from our deadline for the business analytics program this year for this coming cycle. So really excited to answer all of your questions and we will get to some of that Q&A at the end, but hopefully much of it will be answered throughout the presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, our agenda today is to give that overview, share a little bit of the most recent class profile, talk about what the admissions criteria is, what are we looking for in applicants, and then talking overall about the application specific, what are the instructions, what are the different components, and what are some tips and tricks and important dates to keep on your calendar, and then we'll get to that Q&A. So what is business analytics? Business analytics is an approach to solving problems that starts with the data, it builds out models to arrive at decisions that ultimately create value. And the business analytics program has been designed with this, with this mission in mind and this approach in mind. So you'll be using a lot of different tools in order to um, reach those decisions using data-driven decisions. It is a 12-month program. We're focused on applying the tools of modern data science, optimization, machine learning. You'll really be doing a deep dive into kind of computer science. You'll be um, answering industry questions that people are looking for answers on, but using, using that data and um, really thinking about how you can optimize a decision using uh, the tools such as AI, machine learning. Um, solving real world problems and all of that real world solution <clears throat> is really built into the MIT Sloan business analytics program. Um, as we will talk about in a little bit, we have capstone project, which is a required part of the business analytics curriculum where you'll be working um, with real companies and working on real world problems in order to put those um, learnings to the test. You'll, there's also a partnership with MIT Sloan and the MIT ORC, which is our Operations Research Center. So I'm sure many people on the call today are very well familiarized with the ORC's work and what they do. Um, but that partnership allows you to take some classes with, um, well, with the ORC classes while you're a business analytics student. You also have the opportunity to be a research assistant in the business analytics program, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then I'll talk a little bit more about that capstone project that I was mentioning. <clears throat> so in terms of diverse research opportunities, um, MBAN students have a really unique opportunity to be a research assistant for a faculty member during their time in the program. And you, they can do this during the fall or the spring semester. It is a commitment of a certain number of hours per week, which is 10. Um, and there's a competitive application process. Not everyone will get this research assistant position and not everyone will get the one that they were hoping for. Um, more details would be released on that you know, towards the time that you matriculate at Sloan. Uh, but it is a really unique opportunity as that's not the case for um, all programs to have that kind of research uh, focused assistantship, assistantship with faculty members at MIT. The, Cap the Capstone Project is one of the most unique um, unique opportunities within the Business Analytics Program and within Sloan. It is a 24 unit course. It's required as part of the curriculum and it takes place actually over the summer. So it's at the end of um, your time as a business analytics student and you'll work in a team of two. So it'll be you and one other business analytics student that's pa uh, paired up with one of our Capstone um, partner companies. And you'll be working on an analytics project or um, you know, a solution that they're trying to solve within that company. So it is a real world problem. You pick your company, you kind of rank the, the companies and the problems that interest you. And likewise, the companies rank the MBA and students. And there's a matching um, that's done in that way in order to um, choose the kind of capstone projects with the students in their business analytics program. 
you'll uh, have faculty advisors that are assigned to your team. Um, sometimes students from the ORC are also assigned to kind of oversee that capstone project and help you with, you know, the analytics and how you're kind of approaching the problem, making sure that you're using the best tools that could be used, um, a, a, you know, addressing it using the data science um, research methodology that you've learned during your time um, in the fall and the spring semesters. In the spring semester, you kind of refine and improve on your projects and, and devise problems for solving um, final uh, um, capstone sponsor projects. And then ultimately, you spend that 10 week summer on site with a practical training. Um, and then you do your uh, showcase, which is an opportunity to kind of share that those learnings, what you worked on during your capstone with um, the rest of your classmates. Here's just a sampling of some of the capstone company partners that we've worked with in the past and that continue to come back year over year. Um, I know that this is something that the faculty are continuing to ex expand upon and working with other companies to get them on board as, as capstone partner companies. So really excited to continuously seeing this list grow over the years. And here's just a sample of the different projects that you can see. So you can see, for example, Coca-Cola, um, they worked on prioritizing customer visits and Starbucks. They worked on predictive maintenance, um, USPS. They did opioid detection in the U.S. mail stream. So really exciting projects that our students have been working on. Um, and this was just a quick sampling. You can also go online. Uh, the Capstone um, Showcase that I was mentioning on that last, that last slide is located on our YouTube channel. So you are able to watch that if you're interested to see kind of what the students have been working on in the past. So when we talk about business analytics students, it's important to focus on their career outcomes um, and thinking about where they end up after this one year program. So six months after graduation, the class of 2021s, 100% of them had accepted an offer. Um, and you can see that 98% of them um, were within the United States. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see kind of what those base salaries and signing bonuses looked like for the business analytics students. I have a link down at the bottom to the business analytics employment report. You can also find this on our CDO website, or perhaps one of um, my colleagues in the background can just drop that link into the chat so our attendees can easily access it. So as I mentioned, this is the class profile for this most recent class um, that just in, that just started with us at the end of the summer. Um, so it's a 78 person class size, and that is what we anticipate for a class size next year, right around the 80 student mark. Um, and then you can see the academic incredibly strong. We have a 3.88 median undergraduate GPA and a 169 median GRE quant score. Um, we did put that middle 80% for quant and verbal of the GRE at the bottom. On average, our business analytics students have about 18 months of um, work experience, full-time work experience, or internships. So that's on, um, you know, Anything that you may have done during your undergraduate degrees or during or post graduation, if you have spent a little bit of time outside um, of undergrad, but know that business analytics is one of our early career programs. So it is looking for folks that are kind of coming early on in their careers rather than people that are um, maybe um, more well established in their careers. Internationally, we have 24 countries represented and 74% of the overall class is international. About 37% are, are women, um, and you can see that 81% come from a STEM undergrad degree, um, keeping in mind that STEM now includes econ. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you can kind of see the undergraduate majors that are represented. So the evaluation process for business analytics students um, is one that happens um, every year after the deadline, and we'll talk about those dates in a minute, but all applications will be reviewed after the deadline. So even if you hit submit today on your application, we are not going to look at it until after the deadline in January. At that point, all of the professionally trained admissions committee staff members will be starting to review the application. And so that will include people from our team um, that are that sit on the admissions committee, as well as faculty and program um, specific uh, staff within the business analytics department. So you, then once we review your application, a subset of um, applicants will be invited to interview with us. And interviews are by invitation only. 
They are required step in the process, but just know that not everyone is invited to interview. So that is something um, that you will need to move forward with if, <clears throat> if you want to consider to be um, or the, if you want to continue being considered for the business analytics program. Uh, in interviews will all be conducted on Zoom this year. We will continue with all virtual interviews. Um, and more details about the interview process will be shared with that subset that are invited to interview later on in the process. So who are we looking for when we consider our business analytics students? We're really looking for motivated applicants who are passionate about data science and analytics, have had experience or exposure to data science and analytics and either their <clears throat> undergraduate um, studies or in any of their internship or professional experiences. So when we think about strong academic records, we're looking for folks that have a fundamental understanding of mathematics. And so some of the classes that we ask if you've had <clears throat> experience or exposure to is linear algebra, probability statistics, and multivariable calculus. Um, you know, we are looking for some exposure to computer programming and just having some familiarity, familiarity with some, some different languages. R and Python are two of the, the ones that we're looking most specifically for. Please note these aren't prerequisites, but certainly something that we're looking to understand, you know, what, um, how, what's your comfort level when it comes to computer programming languages? And then also um, STEM backgrounds. So when we're looking above, above and beyond the academic record, we're looking for excellent communication and interpersonal skills. It is imperative that you um, are proficient in the English language before joining MIT Sloan and, and joining the business analytics program. So you need to be able to write and speak in the English language before joining the program. So that will all be um, assessed as part of the evaluation process in both the interview as well as the written application. We're also looking for team players. This is a competency that is really important across all of Sloan, regardless of the program, and certainly within the business analytics program, you will be collaborating regularly with teammates on your team, um, teammates in your class and in your program. Um, and we want to make sure that you value the perspectives of others as well as um, can contribute in a meaningful way. And then that kind of leads nicely into this last point of being an active member of the Sloan classroom and community. Um, it is a really collaborative group of people that want to work together and value others' perspective. And it's really important that you come in with an open mind um, to learn and become the best leader in the data science and analytics field that you can. So here is the checklist for the application. For those of you that have not already opened the application, I definitely recommend going in, reading through the instructions, and making sure um, that you have everything kind of in line. So the deadline is January 5th. So we are just about a month away from that deadline, and everything needs to be submitted by January 5th. Um, we will immediately start reviewing applications on January 6th. So as part of your application, you will need to upload a resume. There are a few short answer questions. There are three letters of recommendation that need to be submitted. So I'm going to take a pause here and talk about those letters of recommendation. The letters of recommendation all need to be submitted through our online application. So you'll go into the application itself. You'll navigate to the recommendation section on the left-hand side, and you will put in the recommender's name and contact information. We will then reach out to that recommender with a link to where to upload their letter of recommendation um, and how to respond to any of those kind of short questions that we might have for them. Um, but you should not be uploading their letter of recommendation. We do not accept email versions or mail versions of letters of recommendation. It must be done through the online application and through that um, system of putting in their contact information. Please note that we do utilize um, professional email contact for letters of recommendation. So we are looking for you to put in their professional letter of recommendation, not their personal email addresses. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about who your recommenders are going to be. You'll also need to upload your academic transcripts and answer a few questions about the relevant courses that I mentioned on the last page, namely multivariable calculus, statistics, linear algebra. There will also be two video questions as part of the application. One of those videos you can start to prepare in advance where we ask you to introduce yourself to your future classmates. It's a 60 second video. There are no subtitles and no background music allowed and it has to be one take. So you cannot be editing the video. Um, so again, that would be something that you would upload in it. You can prepare and upload 
in advance, um, you know, now or between now and January 5th. And then there's another video component that will appear in the application it's called video question two, and it will appear within the application after you've filled out a majority of the application. You'll see that an additional tab appears on the left-hand navigation screen in the application, and you will have 60 seconds to review the question, prepare your response, and then immediately the camera will turn on. So you will not have you know, ample time to review it in, in, um, in advance, but you will have 60 seconds to kind of think through the question and then immediately pop to the camera. Um, so this, this question is not quantitative in nature. It requires zero preparation. Um, it should really just be something that you don't, don't be worried about it. Really think about it in terms of um, getting to know you a little bit more and kind of seeing how you respond um, in an immediate uh, scenario. So then finally, um, in our list of required materials are the GMAT and the GRE score. So we will consider this as part of your application. Um, but know that the, the committee has continued to kind of um, loosen the requirement as a result of COVID continuing to impact where uh, testing locations are available. But if you do have it available to you and you have taken the GMAT or the GRE either in person or online, please do submit that score as part of your application. If you are unable to take a test, um, don't worry, you can just submit it without that test score. Um, so then again, everything will be reviewed starting on January 6th. Towards the end of January, we will be releasing our interview invitations to that subset of individuals that will be invited to interview. And then throughout the month of February, we will be doing those virtual interviews on Zoom um, and more information will be sent to the invited um, interviewees at that time. And then final decisions will be released at the beginning of March. So just a quick timeline for everyone to kind of keep in mind and what that looks like over the next few months. So when you're thinking about the interview for that subset that we'll be interviewing, you wanna be prepared. Um, you will receive some short answer questions that you'll need to reply to and submit um, via um, the link that's provided in the interview invitation before your interview. So just something to keep in mind, we will send those prompts again when you're invited to interview and you'll have time to respond. The interview itself, again, is gonna be virtual, It'll be 30 minutes within a member of our admissions committee. And there will be both behavioral and technical questions. So you can think of that. Um, certainly some of the technical questions might cover those areas that we talked about with multivariable calculus or, or statistics, um, maybe some linear algebra questions, one or two. And you will be able to use just a pen and paper, but no calculator during those um, questions during the interview. But again, here is just that timeline that we just talked through so you can see it on the computer. Screen, um, just January 5th through the deposit deadline of April 15th, with the final decisions being released on March 3rd. Of course, we will have some admin events after that March 3rd date that we will, um, you know, uh, advertise to all of the groups, uh, the entire group of admits towards uh, the April 15th deposit deadline. So just some quick tips from us on the admissions committee. We're looking for reasons to admit you. I think this is one of the most um, overlooked piece of um, advice that we that we can often give. We are always looking to advocate for you as part of the admissions process. So make sure you're thinking of your application um, as a whole picture of who you are, um, not just the listed components. Think about what your recommender will be saying about you, what kind of experience they've had with you. Think about what you're saying in your short answer questions, um, how you're responding, make sure there's consistency there, and make sure that you're telling us, you know, why you're going to be a great fit for MIT Sloan. Um, make sure you follow the instructions. We've been really careful and really thoughtful about putting the time into uh, drafting these instructions, so make sure that you follow them very carefully, um, and make sure you're be your, your, you make, make sure you're being yourself during uh, the application during the interview process and everything. We are excited to get to know you. We are so excited to see a really diverse class, a diversity of thought um, and perspective where you came from um, in the world or where you came from in an undergraduate perspective, what your um, professional experience has been. So make sure you showcase all of that throughout the application. And then again, just make sure that you think of us as your advocate. Um, we're here to help you, and we just want to make sure that we have all the data that we need to admit you.
But this time I am going to invite my colleague Rayvon to come back on, join us on camera and um, open up the questions. Let me know. I see that there's been quite a few that have popped in. Good day, everyone. I hope you are um, having a great time uh, listening to my colleague Jen, um, excuse me, Alexis, sorry, <laughs> so sorry. Um, with the presentation, uh, we are doing our best to answer all the questions that we've received. Um, so I highlighted a few that I think are really uh, helpful to, for everybody to listen or have answers to. Uh, the first one is there must be hundreds of academically brilliant applicants. What are the factors that help you differentiate a future Sloan student? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a really um, robust competency model that we use across all of our programs at MIT Sloan. It is, you know, tweaked ever ever so slightly depending on the program. But, you know, some of the things that we're looking for in all Sloan students, regardless of the program, are certainly um, that team-oriented behavior. So I talked about this a little bit earlier, but we're looking for folks that are open to op open to different perspectives, can contribute something additional in the classroom, and are excited to collaborate. Um, we are not a school for individual contributors or folks that want to work on their own. We really do value what you'll be learning in the classroom and learning alongside your peers. So um, when we think about Sloan students, I think that that can kind of carry through regardless of the program. Thank you for that. Uh, the next question that we have is, um, how does the fellowship scholarship work for applicants? Do we have to submit an additional application in order to be offered? No, you do not. So that is something that happens automatically and you'll get information about it at the time um, of your admission. So at this time, you don't need to do anything additional. Um, all of that information will kind of come down the line at the time of admission. You're on mute, Rivon. <laughs> Just my luck, of course. Uh, we have some really great questions here. Um, again, trying to figure out the the, the best ones to ask. Um, I'll go with this one really quickly. Can we submit four recommendations? No, please follow the instructions on the application. So as I said, we have been really thoughtful about this. We are only taking three letters of recommendations. You will only be able to put three letter, three names in for your letters of recommendation into the application. Um, you should not be submitting any additional above and beyond that. All right, the next question, what GPA scale does MIT use when referring to average GPA? Oh, that's a great question. It's 4.0 is what we are what we are reporting on within that class profile. I'm not sure if someone from our team already dropped the class profile link into the chat, but if you could, that would be great. Um, but you do not need to recalculate your GPA. So you'll see within the application itself that if you are an international student or your school does not report on a 4.0 scale, you do not need to recalculate it. You should import it into our application exactly as it appears on your transcript. Perfect. And then we have another question about letter recommendations. Um, can they use one professional and two academics or the criteria if the student is, uh, if the, the, or does the criteria change, excuse me, if the applicant is a student versus um, somebody that has professional work experience? It does change. Um, we have preferred if you have work experience versus if you're a current student. So if you go into the instructions or on the how to apply page onto the website, you can see which category applies to you, um, whether or not you're in the professional world right now or whether you're a student and what our um, preferred selection for recommenders is based on that. Perfect. And then we have a few questions about the GRE, GMAT. So I'm going to kind of do an overarching sure. high level, give any insight as far as waivers are concerned, yes. uh, how that's considered in the application overall. Yep. So the GMAT and the GRE continue to be an important data point for us to understand kind of your quantitative abilities, but it is not the end all and be all. 
We are very well versed in reviewing and evaluating applications without a GMAT or GRE score. We've been doing this for a number of years now, and we're able to see, you know, people's successes in the quantitative space, whether it be through their undergraduate experience, through their internship experience, or through even any non-degree coursework that you've done, you have the opportunity to put that in your application. For the GMAT or the GRE, um, if you have a test score, wonderful, input that into your application as that additional data point. But there is no negative inference if you do not have one. Um, there's no waiver required for um, anyone that doesn't have a test score. You just will simply ap apply without the test score in the application. You don't need to do an additional step or take any additional action. Uh, you just submit it without the test score overall. So hopefully that addresses almost all of the questions. Let me know if not, Ravon. Uh, no, I think you did a great job with answering that. I know there were a number of questions about uh, testing. Uh, so hopefully that answer is sufficient for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you have a few questions about um, the application pool and just overall what goes into, um, again, kind of selecting individuals and um, the, inv the invitation to interview. Uh, so if you can yeah. shed a light on that as well. Please. Yeah. Absolutely. So again, that strong academic record is definitely important for the business analytics students with a 3.88 median um, GPA when you think about um, the lot, those last incoming class. And that's only for those that were on that 4.0 scale. Um, we definitely have really strong candidates and really strong matriculants that come into the business analytics program. We are again looking for folks that have some familiarity with progr computer programming languages. So make sure that you answer those questions on the application or showcase that within your resume so that we understand what languages you're proficient in, what languages you have some familiarity with. We do ask the, the level of um, familiarity you have with each language. So you can you can choose multiple languages within the application to answer. Um, and then, you know, again, with the competencies of, of being a really good team player, open, in, open to different perspectives, um, those are all the kinds of things that we're looking for in that initial read of the application. And then in the interview, you know, we're assessing out whether or not you are proficient with your English language skills. Um, we're talking a little bit more about your, your technical skills. So the interview will cover some technical questions as well as behavioral questions that we may not have been answered uh, or may not have gotten answered within the written application itself. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, the next question, I will have about three years of work experience when this course starts in 2023. Am I still considered early career and eligible for this program? Yep, absolutely. You're still eligible. We would love to see your application and consider you for admission. Three years is most definitely still early career and within that early range. Um, you know, I think that when we start seeing any higher than three years, we might start to think that it, it might not be earlier in your career at that point, but three years is something that we definitely see. So 18 months on average. So, um, you know, I, I think that that's completely fine. Okay. Uh, the next question, is this program good for somebody coming from more formal business education, non-tech background, or strong math uh, background apart from statistics? So we are looking for folks with strong mathematical fun um, fundamentals, understanding of statistics, linear algebra, multivariable calculus. So if you don't have that background, it is really probably not the program for you. Okay. And then we have another question. Um, could you shed a light on what's the difference between the Masters of Finance versus the Masters of Business Analytics program? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are different in the sense that Masters of Finance will focus more on kind of modern finance and, and what you're doing um, in, you know, financial accounting and that that um, area, whereas business analytics is focusing more on the an analytics and modeling, um, using data for data-driven decisions. We will be having another version of this for, for MFIN on Thursday of this week. So um, if you want to log in and learn a little bit more there, we often have folks that have overlapping applications. So you can apply to both programs simultaneously. Um, that does happen every year. We have folks that are applying that are interested in kind of um, going into certain areas of the financial field that 
are thinking about kind of using analytics and it, m both programs might make sense to them. So you can feel free if that's something that interests you to apply to both programs and the admissions committee will consider you for both, but you will need to submit two separate applications, do everything um, concurrently with one another and they do have the same deadline this year. Perfect. Uh, my next question for letters of recommendation from an employer, is it preferable to be, is it preferable for the recommendation to come from a direct supervisor or can it be someone else who can speak to my quantitative skills? Yeah, that's a great question. So preferably we want both of those things, the same person I would say, but I understand that maybe that's not the, the best um, answer. So we want someone that can speak to your quantitative skills, but also to your professional abilities. So thinking about that might be, you know, um, there might be two professional letters of recommendation, one that can talk a little bit more about your direct supervisor who can talk a little bit more about how you are uh, in a professional setting, and then whomever that other person is within the professional setting uh, that can talk about your quantitative skills. So I think that that's a unique situation. A lot of people, it's the same person, the, the direct supervisor can talk about the quant skills, but um, understanding that that everyone has a unique situation. So you just kind of have to balance those two things. But you definitely want to make sure that someone is talking about your quantitative abilities and skills within the letters of recommendation. Perfect. And then a few questions about interviews. Um, what's the <laughs> best prepare for them? Uh, how to prepare for tech questions uh, and how to prepare for interview essay. Okay, all of those, will, all of that information will be sent to you if you are invited to interview. So we're not going to spend too much time on interview prep today, um, but I will tell you that you know you will have ample time to respond to the questions. It's two questions that you will be asked to respond to within 24 hours. Um, you have to submit it by 24 hours before your interview is scheduled. So you have time to respond to those and upload your answers. And then for the technical questions, it's typically, again, those linear algebra, um, multivariable calculus and statistics questions that will ask you live on the um, interview. And so your interviewer will ask you to get out a pen and paper and, and present a couple different questions and ask you um, to respond to them. Um, during that. So maybe just kind of brushing up on some of those fundamentals. Great. Um, can the capstone project be completed at a place of permanent employment or only if partner is on approved list? So the capstone projects are partners that are on a, an approved list. So that is part of um, the overall curriculum. But many folks have gone on to work for a uh, capstone project partner um, post-graduation and full-time employment. So not quite the question they asked, but, um, you know, you might have good luck um, in your capstone project. Okay. Um, you guys are still pouring in with the questions. Thank you for <laughs> your level of engagement with us. Um, if I'm a first year master's student at another program, which ends in 2024, am I still eligible to apply to 2023 fall entry? If I'm willing no. to the current program? <laughs> I think uh, if I'm understanding that correctly, they're gonna be wrapping up another grad program in 2024. Uh, right. No, you cannot start in 2023. This is a full-time program. You ha will have no time to be doing another program at the same time. All right. Um, would entrepreneurship background be a plus, or are you specifically looking for a strong mathematics background rather than business? I think we answered this one before very similarly. An entrepreneurial background is fine, but you still do need to have those fundamentals in mathematics. All right. And then another question kind of along the lines of um, our selection process, individuals, an individual wanted to know if we only select students from top tier uh, institutions. Um, so if you can shine a light on that. Definitely not. All applicants are considered exactly the same. We are looking at your overall um, ability, your academic record, regardless of the school that you went to um, and, you know, what you have done during your time in undergrad or post undergrad if you are early in your career, but definitely no requirement to have attended a top tier school. Okay. Uh, the next question, are the A-Lab clients similar to the Capstone clients? Are the A-Lab, 
Okay, they must be talking the action learning lab partners yeah. similar to the capstone project. So I'm happy to go back and kind of put who some of the examples are. So here you go here. Um, I think some of them probably are overlap, but they would be different projects that they'd be working on. Um, but I would imagine that some of them have overlapped in the past. Okay. And then the next question, um, could you please explain how MBAN differs from a master's degree under the operations research center? Yeah, and truthfully, I think that I don't know if I can answer specifically what the ORC master's program looks like and what their curriculum base is. I know that um, a number of people apply to the ORC and can also be considered for the business analytics program. Um, the curriculum is slightly different, so I would reach out to the ORC directly to understand kind of what their program looks like versus ours. Okay. Um, a question on English language proficiency, uh, or rather, no, um, yeah. So the recommendation letters have to be in English or can they be in another language? Yep, that's a great question. So they don't have to be in English, but they need to be, there needs to be a certified translation of the letter of recommendation. So if your recommender is unable to um, write in English, you he or she will need to get a certified translation and have that uploaded as well. Okay. Let me just scroll through. I feel like a lot of these have been answered, even though there's quite a few. Uh, I have another question. Great. Could, could you kindly elaborate more about what is expected from the video essay? Sure. Um, so for the first video essay, the 60 seconds that you have time to kind of um, prepare for, that is an introduction to your future classmates. So we're looking for a little bit more in that essay, or excuse me, that video introduction, then maybe we can find elsewhere in your application. So we don't want it to be a repeat of your um, your resume. We don't want it to be a repeat of other parts of your application, but maybe tell us a little bit more thinking about when you walk into your MIT Sloan business analytics class in a year, um, what would you be saying to your future classmates? How would you introduce yourself? So think about that um, in response to it. So that's for video question one. I saw some more questions come in about the second video question. So um, an example of the second video question, you know, would be tell us about a recent book you read or tell us about a recent TV show that you watched um, or, you know, What's your favorite color and why? So again, they shouldn't require any preparation above and beyond the 60 seconds um, that you will be given and that will be automated. I can't tell you what your question will be because it is a random generated bank of questions. All right, thank you for that insight. Um, it looks like all the, question, the questions that remain are questions that have already been answered in some form or fashion. So at this point in time, uh, we don't have any more questions. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining us. And Alexis, if you have any last words. Yeah, absolutely. So as we mentioned, the upcoming deadline is January 5th. I'll put this um, timeline on the board again. So make sure that you get all of your materials in by January 5th. Um, and then we uh, will be re begin reviewing the applications on January 6th. And you'll hear from us about interview decisions by the end of January with those interviews starting virtually in February. So we're really excited to um, start considering everyone. If you have any questions at all, as you're putting those final touches on your application or do throughout the entire process, please feel free to reach out to our team. We are more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope we got a number of your questions answered. This recording will be available online later on um, in the week, so you can go back and review it. Thank you so much, and have a great day.